Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Riglicki, my Raiders tropical weather expert. Hurricane season is here. Now you may have seen that a lot of experts are calling for this season to be one of, if not the most active hurricane seasons on record. I'm here to tell you why. Now be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I've got one or two surprises for you for this upcoming season. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. It sure does help the channel out. So one of the most important forecasts that we get for this season is from Colorado State University and our friend Phil Klotzbach. Now what he's calling for in his April forecast is a, is a season that's way above normal. We have 23 named seasons when the average from 1991 to 2020 is 14.4. 115 named storm days, the average is 69.4. 11 hurricanes, average 7.2. Hurricane days, 45, average of 27. Major hurricanes, five with an average of 3.2. And accumulated cyclone energy of 210 with an average of 123. Now this accumulated cyclone energy is a way of measuring the kinetic energy of all tropical cyclones throughout the whole basin. And these numbers are well above average. And the question is, why are these numbers so high? Well, a lot of it has to do with El Nino, or specifically our transition from an El Nino to a La Nina. So these two plots here basically talk to you about what El Nino is and what La Nina is. And this all really is just simply a measure of sea surface temperatures and the atmospheric response to those sea surface temperatures in the far eastern Pacific, off the coast of Northwest South America. Now in an El Nino, which we just started coming out of, you'll see we have warmer than average sea surface temperatures and rising motion. Now what that does over here is you have rising motion in the Eastern Pacific, and then that comes and creates an outflow away into the Caribbean and you have sinking air in the Atlantic. So this is what happened last year is that you had an El Nino. So you had a lot of convection in the Eastern Pacific, a lot of rainfall that created vertical wind shear, which is a change of wind speed with height. That was basically shearing off and decoupling and basically chopping the heads off all of these hurricanes. Now the air would sink and that's how you would get a reduced hurry, a number of hurricanes. In a La Nina, it is now opposite. So the warm water is now in the Western Pacific. So as a result, a lot of the rainfall is going to be where that warm water is. So you're also going to get outflow back to the east. But the big change here is that it's going to sink over the cold water in the eastern Pacific, leaving the Atlantic and specifically the Caribbean relatively untouched. And that's why we're going to see most likely a more active hurricane season compared to last year. So there are two major components that come in for these forecasts, what they would really drive these forecasts. One of them we've already touched on is El Nino and La Nina, and the other are sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic. Now, if we take a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, this is for the end of April, 2024, you can see here that the cold sea surface temperatures have already started appearing right here at the equator west of South America. So this lets us know that a La Nina is very much underway. Last year, these are very warm. This is an El Nino. The other component of that is right here. Very, very warm, comically warm, sea surface temperatures off the coast of Africa. It is these two that let us know we're probably going to be seeing a very active hurricane season. Now, why is this important? Well, like I said, we wanna focus on the Caribbean here because when we have an El Nino, we have a lot of convection and we have a lot of vertical wind shear coming across the Caribbean, basically shuts it down. This year, not gonna happen. Open, the Caribbean is now open for business for long track hurricanes. So you may be wondering, how can we look out this far? Well, there are some specific models that are designed specifically for diagnosing these climate signals that we see, or subseasonal signals as well. And what we have here is a collection of forecasts from a variety of statistical and dynamical models, specifically forecasting the sea surface temperature only for El Nino. And when they're positive, that's an El Nino. When they're negative, that's La Nina. And the big thick lines here are your consensus forecasts. So basically all a consensus means is an average of all the different ensemble measures, all the different, all the different forecast models. And all of them are calling for either some very major La Nina or at least a weak La Nina to a neutral situation. So we have very high confidence that a La Nina is coming based on current SST observations and these dynamical forecasts. Now, if we jump to a uh, sea surface temperature forecast from NNME, this is average from July, August, September for 2024, you can see very clearly that the La Nina stands out amongst all the other warmth here. 
This is a huge cold tongue of water at the equatorial Pacific, and you still have very, very warm sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic. So any way you slice it, we have a La Nina, we have very warm waters in the Atlantic, we're looking at a very active hurricane season. Now to really zoom in on the North Atlantic specifically, we're gonna focus on these sea surface temperatures here, valid for July, August, September, same as before, and we're looking to focus on these warm sea surface temperatures between the Cape Verde Islands and the Lesser Antilles. And now we know that a lot of hurricanes come off the African coast, they're called African easterly waves, and as they move over this warm ocean, that's what allows them to generate themselves. In addition, we also have very warm waters on the western side of the basin. So in the Caribbean, as these storms make it all the way across, they're gonna be able to tap into some very warm Caribbean waters. They couldn't do that last year because of the vertical wind shear from the El Nino. Now with La Nina, not a problem anymore. So you may be wondering, how do these warm sea surface temperatures and El Nino kind of interact with each other? And for a good example, we can go right back to last year, to 2023. Now, if we look at all of the storm tracks from 2023, you'll notice we have a lot of activity out here in the far Atlantic. We tend to call these storms fish storms because all they really do, except if they make landfall up in Canada or something, is that they tend to mess up the fish. The fish have a bad day who get caught in the path of these storms. But one thing you'll notice is that there's really nothing going on in the Caribbean. And the one storm that did make landfall, Idalia, dumped a half a foot of rain in my house, snuck in behind all that vertical wind shear from the El Nino. Now, you may be wondering, okay, how does, how does this manifest itself when there is a La Nina? Well, we have two years that sort of remind us of something that's gonna be happening this year. We call these analogs. And the two years I wanna focus on are 2010 and 2020. Now this is 2010. Now you can see a lot of activity in the far Atlantic. There were some warm SSTs, but the thing I wanna draw your attention to, and the National Hurricane Center wants to draw your attention up in the inset, is a lot of activity in the Western Caribbean. As we saw in 2023, this was basically completely shut off. But in our La Nina year, or like I said, transitioning to a La Nina year, this all of a sudden becomes really active. Now there's one more, 2020, and I think all of us will probably remember that, particularly if you live on the Gulf Coast, like, look at that. The Gulf of Mexico was basically a shooting gallery here if for tropical cyclones making landfall in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is my bold prediction for this year, is that I think we're looking at something that's gonna be much closer to 2020 than to 2010, simply because these sea surface temperatures are so warm, the wind shear is gonna be down, and the Caribbean has been waiting for things to just come across and spin up in the Caribbean. Now there's, a, there's an old rule of thumb, right? It's called the 60-20 rule. And that is, if a storm passes by 60 west and 20 north, it's going out to sea. But if these long trackers can make it through, guess what? We're looking at landfall. Not to mention the fact that these things can putter along uh, throughout the Caribbean, but once they get here, these waters are gonna be super warm, and we're gonna be looking at some serious landfall threats for this year. Now you know why this hurricane season is forecast to be one of the most active ever. Now all you gotta do at this point is stay informed and be prepared. And one of the best ways to do that is to download the My Radar app. We keep you ahead of the storm, literally. So stay with us all season long for the most up-to-date and accurate coverage of the season. Be talking to you soon. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.